thank you, Louis, Sean, Mo Moses, and Christoph. What an um, exciting panel. And now moving to the next section, our um, panel is entitled Innovating on Consumer Wallets. And I'd like to welcome two builders in the cello community that is at the forefront of um, innovating on wallets um, for consumers, for, for crypto. Uh, I have with me Jackie Bona, uh, who is the head of consumer growth at C-Labs. She's bringing her extensive experience in marketing and go-to-market functions. Um, in the global technology space to see or to oversee consumer growth and marketing in the company. Um, and she is joining us from the Bay Area in the United States. And I also have Nial Doc, who is the founder of PesaBase. Um, he's calling from Melbourne, Australia. Um, it's, I think, one o'clock in the morning right now over there. So thank you so much for joining us. Um, as the founder of PesaBase, um, PesaBase is a fintech company uh, it's a payment and remittance solution with a mission to financially connect Africans um, everywhere. Um, so we'll have them present about the developments uh, in their respective products. And I will start with Jackie. Jackie, over to you. Great. Thank you so much, Angelo, for the lovely introduction. Let me just share my screen. Can you see it okay? Perfect. All righty. Um, so just wanted to say hi. Uh, my name is Jackie and I work on Valora here at C-Labs. And I'm here to talk about how Valora is innovating on the consumer wallet space. They're a simple yet powerful wallet uh, powered by blockchain and the Celo ecosystem. But first, what I wanted to do was touch upon Valora's purpose. And it's really to democratize access to financial tools for people all around the world. Our goal with Valora is really to bring all the benefits of crypto to more people, no matter where you are or where you come from, in one easy-to-use app. And we see this as a unique opportunity to empower the next billion people onto this new financial system that's being built on blockchain. This is why we're all here, right? Uh, and also to give them control over their financial futures. You can actually think of Valora as a Celo hub for all the great solutions that are being built on Celo. And so right now, Valora is being used in tandem to enable ways for people to save for the first time, generate rewards, or even earn income all through their mobile phones, which is pretty cool. And we're here to talk about innovating on consumer wallets. And so what's great about Valora is that it serves as an easy entry point for the Celo DeFi ecosystem, providing that unprecedented access to crypto to anyone in the world through one simple to use app. And so for the remainder of the time, actually, I would love to deep dive into how Valora has already been providing access to basic financial services to these communities worldwide, but then also a little bit more about what we're actually learning about users so we can continue to deliver on the mission. Uh, so one community that I want to shine a light on is the emerging micro-work community in Kenya and how Valora is serving as someone's first bank account. And so I just wanted to give a bit, bit of context first. So uh, Corsali, a cello ecosystem company that's tackling the massive problem of youth unemployment in Kenya, um, and they're providing a means of earning income via a mobile microwork solution. Where Cello and Valora come in is that we're actually being used in tandem with Corsali to enable an easy and instant payment uh, for an online worker's day of wages. And so this is really cool, really great innovation and development. But what we really wanted to do was to learn a little bit more from Corsali workers on how they viewed the money that they were earning through cryptocurrencies through this microwork and what role that Valora played. Uh, so we did some in-depth surveys with this cohort and service, surfaced a few key insights. And so I'll show some quotes here uh, directly from users and, and provide a bit more color on that. Uh, so the first quote here is that a uh, user said that Valora has been their savings wallet for the past month. And so, you know, interestingly, what we saw with this cohort, we saw a change in behavior for these workers with regards to savings. So instead of taking the earnings that they had uh, from this microwork, cash in hand, and then spending it on whatever it is they want to spend it on, uh, we actually saw that the workers were now saving what they earned for the very first time, all within a digital wallet. They saw Valora as a savings app with the ability to earn interest uh, via savings uh, with Seller Rewards, which is another program that uh, we were piloting within Valora. And it was the main difference that was cited by the respondents when they were asked to compare Valora and M-Pesa, which is the digital, um, the dominant digital money option uh, existing in Kenya. The second insight here um, and the quote that I wanted to highlight was that it was easy for these users to convert their crypto dollars into Kenyan shillings uh, in my M-Pesa. And so uh, this is thanks to another cello ecosystem company, Katani Pay, um, that's enabled a smooth cash out and integration with M-Pesa. 
um, that not only in increased usability of solo dollar for the user, but also established trust within the app and the payment platform. The last insight is actually my favorite. Um, so the quote here is, you know, knowing how cryptocurrency works was a big plus uh, via Valora and, and fellow dollars, um, as I previously viewed it as rocket science. And so one thing to emphasize here in this story that almost everyone in the cohort is a first time crypto user and that the Valora experience was positive for them to consider it as a legitimate financial instrument and one that they could actually use. And so for most of these users, you know, they've heard about crypto before, especially Bitcoin and, and some of the other more popular um, coins. But, um, but earning and saving via Valora was really the first time that these users got to hold onto it or even interact with crypto for the very first time. So really exciting to see. So we got excited you know, about these user insights that we saw from the Kenya cohort. And so we wanted to learn even more from Valora users at large on how we were using the app. And so, uh, so the insights here were actually uh, you know, born out of a product market fit survey. Um, and so what we did was we did what most consumer apps do. We sent a push notification out to all of our users. Um, but for this purpose, we actually wanted to ask a few simple questions on how, uh, you know, from our users to learn a little bit more about product market fit and how they're using Valora. And so some key themes that we heard illustrated by the quotes on the slide. Uh, so Valora showcases nicely the ease and benefits of using blockchain for money transfer internationally. And so a little bit of color here is that, you know, Valora's use case is, is uh, to send peer-to-peer -peer payments internationally. Um, and we were happy to see that for many of our users, they were actually using Valora to send value worldwide and had commented that they're able to do this with ease of use. Um, but interestingly, you know, what we saw is that, you know, uh, this quote illustrates that I can simply save my cello and then also send money as, uh, to my friend as a two-in-one. So in addition to be able to send funds peer-to-peer, -peer, um, what was interesting is that we actually saw over 40% of respondents um, consider savings and rewards to be the main benefit of, for Valora. So very similar to what we were seeing in, in the Ken in Kenya pilot. Uh, we're discovering that people are enjoying these passive rewards via savings features, uh, which motivates them to save uh, and also to earn rewards. And so a virtuous cycle, which is really great to see. And then lastly, um, you know, we, we saw quotes around, you know, I like that I get rewards for saving money. So again, commenting on the fact that they, they enjoy this feature, um, but I wish there were more spaces and places to spend solo dollars uh, and shout out to Badali for, for providing that. Um, and so, you know, lastly, it's good to see that we're adding value to users via rewards, but we obviously hear the opportunity from our users to enhance the usability of Valora and to be able to spend uh, CUSD in more spaces and places. Um, so it leads me to, believe, to, uh, to talk a little bit more about, this is my last slide, uh, what's next for Valora? And so, you know, we've seen exciting findings here from our users. And so we want to further explore savings features. And, and again, it's really exciting to see such positive reception from our users on earning rewards. So we're exploring more savings features via cello integration, uh, cello ecosystem integrations to further maximize rewards for Valora users. Secondly, uh, we're also investing in in-app user education. So users, especially the ones that are using crypto and, and digital wallets for the first time, um, can, can discover additional use cases within Valora and to learn more about how they can get most out of the app. And so that's really important to us. And then third, uh, we're also continuing efforts to enhance usability for Valora. Uh, this in includes adding additional stable coins, such as Celo Euro, uh, improving the experience on personalization within the user experience with avatars and names, um, as well as enhancements for crypto to fiat on and off ramps in key markets, uh, which is a consistent ask uh, from our users. And then lastly, you know, we will continue to partner with the Celo ecosystem and all the great solutions that are being built. And this is really so we can deliver more value to users uh, by continuing to serve as that easy entry point for, for people all across the world to, to access all the innovations driven by Celo. So I wanted to close and just say thanks and please find us on social, the Laura app. And uh, yeah, let us know if you have any questions. Thank you. All right, thank you, Jackie. Um, up next, Neil. Thanks, Angela. Hi guys, my name is Neil and I'm going to talk to you about PesaBase. Next. So when I started PesaBase, my main goal was to build a solution that I myself would need. Uh, essentially, having lived in different countries, 
and watch my original country, South Sudan, Sudan itself, before it split, uh, lose its currency two or three times uh, and, 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 and see how that wealth was diminished as a result. Uh, I came across Bitcoin in 2013, and that gave me the opportunity to rethink how can I provide a solution in that regard. Uh, so that led to the mission of what PesaBase is. Next slide. So in my mind, when I first came across Bitcoin and eventually now Celo, my first goal was how can I use this to make it easy for me to hold wealth, to be able to transmit money, and pretty much be able to move across borders without having to worry about what do I have, what don't I have, where can I have or hold my money, how can I access it? And so to me, uh, this answers that question easily. Next. So we've been building since we joined Celocom early last year and we graduated in July. And what we built was the first iteration of product, an Android app. The, the reason why we started with Android was simply because it's just that much easier because majority of the people in Africa tend to use Android phones. And so for us, building something that they can sort of relate to straight up was much easier. And so the first thing we built was just a simple app to hold balance, to send balance, to be able to request money. So if you take a look at it, next slide. So if you look at that, the web part shows that the, the aim with the web, uh, the, the web part was those users that want to do crypto transactions or the agents themselves that want to service users that come to them. Uh, usually you can use your phone, yes, and it's great, but if you're going to do a crypto transaction, you want to be sure uh, what sort of uh, you know, address you're getting, have you copied it, have you done it right? And so those are some of the concerns we had in mind. But the next stage is where our main interest is, and that's the, the app itself. So the next slide. The goal with our app was essentially to have users that can actually send each other value easily. Uh, if I have my brother, my you know, uncles and whoever on the same phone that I have, when I want to send them balance, it's so easy to just click, choose their name and send it to them. It's almost the same functionality that Valora has to a certain extent. And we're approaching it from the point of these users do, do have a gap, a massive one between blockchain and the real world that they're used to. And so you have to approach them from where they are and try and slowly retrain them in the new concept that this solution is so much better for them. And in the long run, they can see it. So far, we can show and prove that we're so much cheaper than the current solutions in the market. Why? Because we don't need to use existing rails to move money. We can use crypto rails for that. And on the other side, exchange it for fiat when we need to and to be able to pay up, top up for M-Pesa float and send out money. And so we found that setup worked best for them. And there's been a lot of interest. Over the last uh, six months, we've actually done $300,000 uh, worth of transactions. And this is not even without any form of, uh, formal advertising yet. This is just talking to people in our community and saying, hey, we have this solution. And by the way, this is way, way cheaper than what's available now. If you want to try it out. To a certain extent, we've had to handhold them and uh, basically say, hey, yes, we know you're not comfortable all the time with an app. Maybe you're not all that comfortable with the internet. Is an agent that can help you do the transaction. And so these agents are the first stepping stones onto what is becoming blockchain and the crypto ecosystem and the DeFi solutions that we're building on top of them. Uh, next slide. So how it works. Uh, next slide. So the first step is we obviously need to get to value the wallet, uh, whether you know, any wallet anywhere that needs to transmit value between different currencies, you need to be able to get value in and value out. And so we have different ways that a user can do that. You can use crypto, you can use M-Pesa. Right now in the process of, uh, of integrating MTN. Uh, in Australia, the funny thing is some of our users are actually literally using Binance to buy USDT and send that balance to us. And we top up with the sale of, uh, a stable coin on our system. And essentially now they can transact between themselves and if they need to get out of the system, all they have to do is choose which option. They can do M-Pesa, they can do MTN. Uh, the other option that we provide for them in Juba, South Sudan, is they can actually go to a physical agent, which is one of our offices, and ask for the US dollar equivalent in return. Most of the people from where I am from, 
are so much more comfortable with U.S. dollars because they don't know whether tomorrow they're going to be in Uganda or whether they're going to be in Kenya. And so for them, that option to be able to pick up physical dollars is great. With time, just like what m has done, we believe these users are going to learn how to save on this platform and how to hold value on this platform and don't have the need to do a lot more exit from the system. And then as that happens, we continue to build solutions and provide uh, more, more, more financial products for them. Uh, next slide. So the main thing if you're transacting on PESA base that are possible right now as we speak is that you can send someone uh, value uh, you can also request. Uh, you can also just use the QR code as a means of quick payments uh, because we sort of locked it down so that a user uh, can only send to people that are in the contact list to, to avoid any sort of spamming and enable privacy. But at the same time, if you walk to a shop, you need to be, be able to do a transaction. Just like in Kenya, if you walk to a shop, you use the phone number to do a transaction. And so we enable QR code for that functionality and we think it really, really works very well. You know, in some instances, I've had someone just send me a WhatsApp a sc a screenshot of their own QR code, and I've been able to just scan that, and it brings up their name and their contact and send it to them. And, and that's one of the features that we really like. Uh, next. So to conclude, what we're building is basically similar to what the, the, the vision that Celo has. One of the things that I find uh, uh, really exciting with what Celo is doing is that they realize, just like I've known for decades, that the solutions in the market are not good enough. Uh, the way we hold value is not good enough. The way we transmit value is too expensive. And Celo is giving us the option to relook at this and say, hey, can we do it better? And blockchain in general is spearheading this. I can see the next 10 years being way, way more exciting than what has happened in the last 10. And so I definitely look forward to this being even more involving uh, and more uh, you know, fulfilling. So thank you for, for listening to me and I'm happy to so, take any question. Thanks, Neil. Um, so we have a few minutes left and maybe I'll ask a few questions. The first one, we go for Jackie. Um, Jackie, I know you guys are doing a lot of user research. Is there anything surprising or particularly insightful uh, that you found through, through the research that you've done with consumers? Uh, thanks for asking that. Um, you know, I think when we had first started this journey, because we've only, you know, launched a few months ago, right, or earlier this year, um, really the hypothesis was that, you know, Valora can basically serve as the easiest way to send, you know, money um, from, from point A to point B uh, worldwide, right? So kind of like a global Venmo uh, functionality. And so it's possible only because it's on crypto rails and we can do it in an easy, low cost way. However, um, you know, the other thing we were thinking about, too, is that, you know, in the product's infancy, how can we also deliver value through, uh, you know, helping users earn yields and rewards? And so we started to test out, uh, you know, programs like such as the Sell Rewards program. And so one of the things that was really insightful during this user research and, and you know, many of the, the points that I had made in my presentation was around users are really starting to see Valora as, as a bank. Right, they are using it to store value uh, for the very first time, but then they're also seeing it as an incentive for them to actually hold, um, you know, the cello dollars, right, to be able to earn uh, incremental rewards. Um, so that's something that's really promising and, and something that we're certainly paying attention to is that how can we deliver more value, uh, and right, and this is this is all kind of in line with uh, with what we're trying to do with DeFi, but actually bringing more people in and making sure that the rest of the world has access to it through Valora. Got it. Thanks for that. Um, Neil, how about, um, my, my question is, what's your assessment of the state of crypto uptake in Africa? Like, what excites you most about it? Or is there a particular driver um, that you guys are looking at that makes it, you know, exciting or, or to watch? I think the main thing that I've uh, caught my interest early enough was not just the fact that we have a solution that will make finance easier in a big way, was the realization that People take for granted in the West the fact that you have a stock market and you have a functional real estate and you can actually just go and if you have some savings, put them somewhere productive. Uh, in Africa, I mean, I know at least one or two people close to me that I've known for years. I mean, let's, let's take Kenya, for example, that ha loan, own a land that turned out to also be owned by someone else. And so you see a situation like that, and that discourages people from actually investing because you feel like you put money in and probably lose them to some sort of scam. 
what crypto gives us is an option, uh, both to hold wealth and to be able to also invest. So you find a lot of young people, including some in my own team, uh, experimenting with what is it like to invest in this space. And for them, it's literally their first experience in investing. That is forcing crypto into their faces and saying, hey, maybe you have $100, maybe you have $200. That doesn't matter. In crypto, it can actually do something for you. And by the way, if you're lucky enough to get Doge, I mean, it's risky for sure, but you could go from $100 to $1,000. <laughs> I mean, you know, so things like that kind of grab your interest. And that is forcing people in Africa to take notice. And the fact that suddenly someone can send you balance in like 10 minutes and you can convert that and maybe through M-Pesa be able to withdraw that. I mean, that hasn't happened before. All they're used to are time-consuming systems uh, that they have to kind of fight to win the battle, so to speak. Yeah. Really exciting developments. Um, yeah. Once again, thank you so much, Jackie and Neil, for joining us. Uh, and we wish Valora and Pesabase the best. All right. Thanks, uh, thank you.